What is up everyone? Welcome to Tuesday's tip week number one. I'm John Wilson and these tips are brought to you from John Wilson Photography Education. So today I'm going to speak to you about using a light meter. I believe that the light meter is still one of the most important tools in the camera case or camera bag. I put a small video together explaining how each of the elements of the light meter works. Let's head to that video now. Today I'm going to explain to you the workings of the camera and the exposure triangle. So if you've got your camera and you've always had it set on automatic because the numbers are just confusing you, well today we're going to break it down for you a little bit to help you understand what each of these things are. Because knowing the, the effect that you want on your photograph will determine what exposure you need to set on your camera. So the three elements in the exposure triangle is you have your aperture, you have your shutter speed and you also have your ISO. Now each of these things work together to give you that effect. So let's start with your aperture. So you have a large aperture, small f number, shallow depth of field, or you have a small aperture, large f number, okay, with a deeper depth of field. Now what does that mean? Okay, so Basically, the lower the f-stop, the, the lower the number on that aperture, the larger the iris of the eye of the camera will open up. And that will give you more depth of field. Now, depth of field is basically, so if I'm here and I have an item behind me here, okay, so the shallower that depth of field, the blurrier that item behind me is going to be, okay? So... To understand that, the lower that number, the larger the iris of the eye of the camera is going to open up to let more light flood in, okay, which is going to determine that your picture is going to be brighter. But what that's also going to do is it's going to cause you more depth of field. So it's going to cause items to the left, to the, uh, to the left, to the right, and behind you is going to be more out of focus. Now, the larger that number on your aperture, the smaller the iris of the eye of the camera is going to be, which is going to make more things in focus. But at the same time, that is going to make your picture darker. Okay. Then we've got your shutter speed. So your shutter speed has got, you've got a slow shutter speed and you have a fast shutter speed. Okay. So the slow shutter speed is going to allow more light into the sensor of the camera. Okay. Now, with doing that, it's going to also cause your image, if you've got camera shake or movement, it's going to cause your image to be more blurry. But it's also going to let more ambience light into that image as well, which is going to make your picture brighter. Okay. So the lower the shutter speed, the lower the number, the blurrier the image can be if you get movement or camera shake, but it's going to make your picture brighter. Okay. Then you've got your fast shutter speed. So if you have a fast moving object, uh, you want to cause, you know, maybe a car going past that you want it to be really sharp in your image, then you would have a fast shutter speed. Okay. So. But at the same time, the fast shutter speed is also going to make your picture darker because this, the shutter is going to open and close really fast. So not a lot of light is going to get in there with that. Okay. Then you've got your ISO, which is basically um, how sensitive the sensor is going to be on the camera. Okay. So you have less exposure or you have more exposure. Okay, so less exposure, which is lower number, okay, so 100 ISO, 150 ISO, lower that number, the darker the photograph is going to be. The higher the number, then the brighter the photograph is going to be. But at the same time, that is going to give you more grain, more noise on your photograph, which makes it little grains of sand on the top of your photograph. So the higher the number, the brighter the photograph's going to be, the lower the number, 
the darker the photograph's going to be. Now, you're probably asking, how am I going to know what each of these things are? Well, the, the, the most important thing that I feel that I have in my case for doing my photography is my light meter. Okay, now your light meter here, you can choose your shutter speed, okay, which is just here. You can then choose your ISO, which is just up here. You see it says 400 there, okay. Let's bring that down, put it down to 100, okay. And from there, when you fire your lights, it will tell you what your f stops going to be. So or what your aperture is going to be. So this is probably the most important tool that you can have in your case when you're doing studio photography, if you want to expose your photographs properly. Now I've always said, would you trust a joiner that came into your house and told you that he's going to put a unit from wall to wall in there? Would you trust him if he didn't measure that area first to make your custom piece? Well, would you trust a photographer that picked up a camera and didn't measure the light before he took your photograph to get the exposure properly so the skin tones and everything are correct? So what we'll do is let's go into the studio and I'll show you how we meter each of the lights. So now um, that we're in the studio, uh, I'd like to show you how we would uh, use our light meter to meter our lights. Okay, so what we'll do is where the subject's going to be, it's going to be here, just where the stools are. Okay, and we've got our main light here, just here. We're going to set our main light is going to be at F8 we're going to shoot. Now we're in the studio setup, so our ISO can be just at 100, it's absolutely fine for being with strobe lights. Um, and then we've got our shutter speed 125th of a second, which allows room for movement. So if you've got a younger child or someone you know, moves about, then that's going to be able to be fine for them. So if we just sit here, make sure our dome's closed over, and then we're going to fire our lights, hold it where the subject's going to be, and fire. Now we're getting a reading of 4.07. So we're going to turn our light up a little bit, just here. Turn up, okay, and then we'll just fire the lights one more time. And then we're going to meter where the subject is again. Still not quite at F8, so we're going to turn up a wee bit more. And meter again. And we're just a little bit over, we're getting F8.01. Turn down just a fraction here. Okay. <coughs> Okay, and that's us on F8 for our main light. Now, our fill light, for adding a bit more light to this side of the face, so it's not all the way dark, we're going to do two stops under for this light here. Two stops. Okay. So to understand two stops, we want to be F8. 4.0 for this side of the face here. We're way too high for that one because that one's up at F8, so let's bong this. Let's turn this right down here. It's a little touch there. So we are good for F8 on our main light and F4 on our fill light over this side here. So that's going to give a nice directional light. Now, as I said before, with the light meter, it makes sure that you're getting your lights exactly where they need to be for the readings. Now I knew what I wanted to shoot my ISO at and I also knew what I wanted my shutter speed to be at. So I needed my light meter to tell me because I knew what I was wanting to shoot at to get it exactly to F8 
and to get it two stops under. Now you could be one stop under, you could be half a stop under. It's entirely up to yourself how you want the effect to look on your photograph. But with your light meter, it means that you're going to do that exactly right. So always, which I believe is, always use your light meter. You're going to get your lights to where they need to be. Well guys, I hope you found that Tuesday's tip helpful and gives you a lot more confidence in using the light meter. If you haven't already, why don't you join us on Facebook at John Wilson Photography Education. And if you like this video, please hit the like button down below as I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as there'll be a lot more Tuesday's tips each week. See you next week.